right. So my name is Lucas Stuber. I'm a speech language pathologist um, specializing in low incidence disorders um, in alternate access methods like eye gaze control, um, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, I really do enjoy it when I say fun. I'm I'm not kidding. It's uh it's something it's something that I very much enjoy. Um, so I uh, I've been playing around for a while with um, with these new features that um, Apple has just introduced with OS X um, 10. And I know I posted a few times in a couple of the Facebook groups, uh, getting real excited about this. Um, uh, and then I posted earlier today saying that I'd finally received my iTribe bar. So I've got my my iTribe uh, tracking bar, which is the only company that has an SDK right now, right now for, for OS X. I've got my collection of three different Toby bars at various levels of, uh, of you know, cost and proficiency. And then I also uh, work with um, my gaze out of Germany. Um, who, who don't really have the focus on OS X. Um, you know, a lot of people are moving towards, uh, towards Chromebook, um, and, you know, Windows, of course, is the low-hanging fruit. Um, the, the, um, the iOS piece is, is tough because we, it used to be that we, one of the problems we had is that we could simulate a cursor on iOS, which means that when you're doing eye gaze, you can't really detect where, um, you know, where someone's looking because there's no way to, um, there's no way for the system to, to recognize an input without a touch. Um, once they started to develop tvOS, that all changed. Um, so we do now have a simulated cursor within iOS 9 and iOS 10. The problem that we're encountering is that Apple is unwilling to give us the amount of voltage out of the lightning port as we would need to run um, an effective eye gaze bar, um, which is too bad. But, um, but I also do understand because it would drain the battery very quickly, um, especially now that the lightning port can only be used for one thing, but that's different commentary. Um, so, uh, so, so that's where we're at with iOS. I know that Apple has filed his own, excuse me, their own patents. Um, there are a couple substitutes, both on Android and iOS, that use um, the the camera to try to simulate eye control or even just head gestures. Um, in my experience, they are not very effective, certainly relative to, um, you know, a high-tech augmented communication, um, you know, eye gaze system. Um, that said, um, you know, I personally can build um, an eye gaze system by going down to Office Depot and getting something like the iTribe or a woman, Toby, and, um, you know, and have a, a system up and running for a family for $500 or $600. Um, so the prices are coming down considerably. Um, and, uh, and I have a number of families that are being served in that way in my area. Um, I'm happy, happy always to share schematics and information in that regard. And if you're a parent that's watching this, um, please do give me a phone call or shoot me an email. I'll have all that information up at the, um, the end of this video. Um, okay, so I've got my, my other camera here you might barely be able to see, so it's recording what's going on on the computer. Unfortunately, there's no good way to zoom when you're doing the, the selfie mode here. Um, so it's not going to be super easy to see what I'm up to, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it every step of the way. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start fresh. So here's my, here's my desktop. Um, what I'm going to do is go into Applications and then I'm gonna go into iTribe. So when you first purchase any product from iTribe, um, you go onto their website and you register with your order number or um, you know the serial number or whatever it might be, and they give you access to download um, you know, what essentially amounts to a development kit for, um, you know, for both Windows and for um, OS X. Yeah. Um, there, there is not support yet uh, with officially for the Linux community, um, which is kind of funny because a lot of this stuff is like the you know the system I'm about to launch here. Uh, I mean, this is fundamentally a, a you know a, a Linux um, system. So you might have just seen the the bars uh, lights went across there. 
Um, so what this did is just ran a series of commands, um, checking on the firmware, checking on the hardware, and the message that I got is that the iTribe tracker stands ready. Um, so all right, we're ready to go. Um, so now I'm, what I'm going to do is, is launch the iTribe UI. So this is like the, uh, you know, the actual control mechanism, and it's telling me my eyes are way off. By the way, you can see my um, extraordinarily uh, um, <laughs> professional method of mounting um, the eye gaze device here. Now, the iTribe does come with this beautiful little um, tripod piece um, that can go to different angles and things. Um, it didn't really work out for me um, in this scenario just because I am so close to the monitor um, and it is a relatively small monitor. Um, I did at one point have uh, the keyboard covered up just with an old iPhone case so that keys didn't get randomly hit while I was working, but I actually haven't had that problem. So I went ahead and just um, did the solution that I have. So let me place myself in a situation here where it's gonna really recognize my eyes. Okay, there we go. So now we got this nice happy green look. Um, uh, it's telling me here the calibration quality the last time I did it was four out of five stars. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. Now a few things I wanna mention over here. So number of points, the, the, mac, the more number of points you can calibrate, the more effective the system is going to be. Um, this is particularly relevant when you're working with kids because some kids don't want to sit there and calibrate 16 points. Some kids don't want to sit there and calibrate nine points. So, um, you know, be judicious about the way that, um, you know, you approach this. Um, for me as an adult without any visual impairment, I don't wear glasses, I don't wear contacts, um, a 12 point, um, calibration is usually adequate. Um, now, it did detect the size of my monitor, but for some reason the area size of the tracking was set to like 100 by 200. So if you encounter that issue, just adjust it to the size of your monitor. Because what was happening was that it was only tracking my vision within this little tiny quadrant. Um, and uh, I, I was starting to think I had some defective unit or something until I realized like, oh, no, I'm done. Um, so alignment, horizontal and vertical, I mean, um, this is something that would be used for uh, situations like hemianosia or, you know, somebody that has a visual impairment in one eye or no vision in one eye, things like that. We can set it to um, focus on the right, focus on the top, things like that. Again, as an adult without a visual impairment, I'm going to go with center um, on all of these. And then you can change the background point a little bit. Um, I'm a big fan of processing time for, you know, for, for kids with disabilities of a variety of, uh, you know, variety of eligibility categories. Um, I've turned up the point sample time um, a little bit here, um, but uh, I would consider it turning, turning it up quite a bit more depending on what kind of student you're working with. Um, so let's give it a shot here. I'm going to hit calibrate. So it's going to be follow the circle. Ooh, oh. Look at that beautiful circle. Okay, and I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. Okay, perfect. And so you see how these lights are turning red? This is exactly when I'm looking at them. So that means the calibration came off without a hitch, um, which is great when you consider the money um, that's spent on this hundred bucks, you know, we have eye trackers that are far more expensive that are much more challenging to calibrate. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that even though the calibration quality is saying lower, come on, that was perfect. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the settings. So, so what the, what, what the SDK for, for OSX for the eye tribe does is, is essentially is a simulated mouse cursor. Um, and then the onus is on other developers uh, to figure out then what to do with the cursor. I mean, this has um, been a, really a project of adults with ALS, um, things like that, um, you know, who are capable of doing that kind of programming. When we're talking about working with kids, obviously that's, that's not so much of an issue. So um, we are very fortunate that um, Apple has taken the step of integrating iGaze control into the operating system. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that's a harbinger of things to come in terms of OS X um, and, uh, you know, potentially even other solutions. Um, 
seeing you know I see, they just came out with the new um, the new laptop the other day with the multi-touch uh, function bar thing and I, I couldn't help but think for myself how easy it would be for them to integrate in some fashion uh, you know multiple laser tracking device and the argument on their end would actually not be um, in favor of uh, you know, advocating for people with disabilities, the argument for them would be marketing purposes, um, which is how Toby, for example, really made their money. Um, you know, they put people with the goggles on them and they send them into Safeway or Fred Meyer or, you know, put them in a BMW or whatever and pay attention to um, what it is that they're attending to um, from a marketing standpoint. Um, and then everything to do with, uh, you know, assistive technology is essentially the sort of write-off. Um, so I would like um, I would like to have that sort of stuff available. Um, the iTribe is working on a wearable solution right now. I don't know how far out it is, um, but I'm going to keep on uh, experimenting and maybe even trying to come up with, uh, with my own stuff here. Um, okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about the calibration. We'll see how things go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the settings. Um, I'm going to go into accessibility. I'm going to go into oh, the very bottom thing, dwell control, and then enable dwell control. So what you're going to get is this whole menu up here of different options. We got left click, double click, right click, drag and drop, scroll menu, so moving up and down on the page. Um, options menu is um, kind of interesting. Um, it lets you bring up a lot of these different things really quickly. Um, and then no action at all, which is the way I set it when I'm, uh, you know, just have it open, but I'm working on something else. Um, we also have a full keyboard. Um, in my opinion, this is pretty small, pretty QWERTY oriented. I'm a much bigger fan of um, Julius Sweetland's OptiKey, if you haven't heard of that. I encourage you to check it out. Um, I think you did a really good job of creating an eye gaze based keyboard. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, the system, so you can do things like play fast forward, dim and brighten, um, eject discs, uh, that sort of stuff, which is very important for an activities of daily living standpoint. Um, oh, excuse me. And then you can customize these things. So, um, for example, I mean, right now this, this custom isn't coming up with anything, and I won't go into it right now, but if you go into the open board press and, uh, pr preferences, I'm sure you're all smart people, you can figure out that you can remove and add some of these options um, based on the needs of either the kids you work with or potentially the geriatric clients or your relative or whatever it might be. Um, okay, so um, heading back, we've got, we've got this guy just came, hanging out here. We've got the dwarf, con dwarf controls going on. Um, the, typically, this is actually set to a uh, dwell time of three seconds. Um, like I said before, I really do believe in processing time for the population that we serve. Um, but for me, it was getting a little frustrating. And you will see why in a moment, because there is still a problem with the API that's being used for, um, for uh, the iTribe on OS X which isn't hugely surprising. I mean, it's a brand new development. Um, and I know that there are people that are working on it um, as we speak. Um, so uh, it's a matter of, um, you know, just sort of getting it resolved. So um, so I'm gonna go back into here. So we've got to all set up um, with this one second thing. Um, this is just sort of about and check for updates and these sorts of things. So everything is pretty much set the way that we want. All right. So let's so shooting some windows here. Perfect. So I mean, we do have functioning eye gaze control. It's not. Um, see, like here's a really good example. Like I'm trying to focus in on that, but the mouse is moving so quickly that it's not even reaching the the one second threshold. Like I feel like I've even got to go lower than that. But it does work from a communication standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and open up cough drop here. This is one of my favorite um, uh, communication devices for a variety of reasons. Number one, because Brian Whitmer, who's the creator of, of it, is a good friend of mine. Um, and number two, because um, he designed this very explicitly for his daughter as a system that could begin, um, you know, it, it, could, it could begin as something that um, 
they could she could use with touchscreen. It could then move on to something that she could use with the Switch, and then eventually it could move um, into something that she could use with the iGaze. And that's kind of unusual to have a system that um, is able to do all three of those things. But nothing worse it ever is. That's funny. This uh, this dual thing is kind of blocking me here. So let's see what I can do. Hello there. So this jitteriness is a real problem. Because it's just not registering. I'm going to go ahead and try reducing the um, speed here. So let's make this 0.25, why not? Let's see. Let's see if I can pull this off. That's gonna be really quick. Hello, hello there, hello there. I am using iGaze to control an Apple laptop, a MacBook Pro. It took a lot of work. And it was, but nothing worth it ever is. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna turn off again. Yep. Think of the possibilities. All right, and that's about it. So there's a lot of possibilities here in terms of what's available, both natively in the U.S or the OS, excuse me, um, and what's available through third-party hardware vendors. Um, given that we know that Apple is producing, theoretically, their own solution for this, I'll be curious to see how that pans out. But again, I suspect it's going to have more of a marketing bent with a sort of accidental disability um, component. So, you know, I, I'm based out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, again, my name is Lucas Stuber. I um, anymore pretty much will consult with SLPs to get systems in place and do IAP review and those sorts of things. Um, I do see a lot of students. Um, I work in Washington State and um, you know do a lot of work with AAC up there in a variety of ways. Um, but uh, please don't hesitate to contact me, whether you're a parent or a clinician, to ask questions about anything. I gaze AAC 101. I've got a video that I just posted about that. Um, guided access, uh, iOS control in general. Um, I'm I'm happy to answer those questions, and I'm sort of notoriously an insomniac. Although I think I'm a little dehydrated. I think that's a big no-no in the SLP world too. So sorry, phone. All right. Thanks for your time. Have a wonderful evening.